Are we live? Yep, we're live. We're live. Yeah. Like Welcome, everyone, to uh, the new sounding, new yeah. set, Scrap Chat. I have to listen to everybody in this thing. It's I don't know how you weird. can listen and talk. It's so yeah, strange. I'm going to have to take these earphones on me. Yeah, because otherwise you'd be listening in reverse. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> that was uh, my my gaydar just went off. Woo! Oh jeez, I did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's no bleeding bass. I'm, that, I'm not alone in feeling that gaydar go off as well. That was very was metro, gay. very metro. But anyway, um, so just I, I, I'll start really quickly with this as well, just to get it out there. Um, if you saw Deco's post, if you didn't, um, Deco has a huge year ahead of him. Uh, big fight in less than two weeks, I think, at the moment. Yeah, on the thirty first, yeah against John Quigley over in Preston mm. huge fight for Deco when he wins that will open the door up for another huge fight from this year so that along with the fact that MTK have a ban on uh, their athletes talking to Irish media Deco just had a lot to focus on so it was it was um the too decision much. came to yeah it, it was too much it, it, he's a boxer he's a professional athlete here and he was focusing on his career and rightfully so but um yeah welcome to Scrap Chat brought to you and uh sponsored by Jim Trishan yeah I love that chili you really do don't I you really do like it, it, he has all these other uh like choices and all i'm like yeah have you got the chili yeah you never you never go for anything else no, other than the chili no. but yeah uh, once again thank you very much to jim trish for sponsoring the show thanks Charles. yeah uh so what's been going on and anyway it's been a uh, it's been what three weeks since we released yeah, an episode three weeks, yeah yeah um, so this is what officially episode four it technically could be episode one episode one so if you're wondering where the videos on youtube have gone um out of respect for Deco and the ban, uh, yeah. we've removed them uh, just because MTK do have a ban and they're at least talking, so we've removed them. So we could go episode four or one. Let's just call it fresh. Oh my god, my gaydar is really going <laughs> off now. You, what is going on with you? I don't know what's going on today. I'm fucking bleeding. I don't know. But right. anyway, yeah. Did you enjoy a coffee, Shane? That was a beautiful coffee. Yeah, no, it's nice. I right, basically got a. Uh, an Americana made, but it was made by an Italian woman who made it really, really well. Yep. Marina, thanks for the coffee. Yeah, thanks yeah. for the coffee. Um, but basically, uh, it's been a process of kind of upgrading the show, upgrading the experience. We've got some mics, invested in some little software. Yeah. We have Fedor here. Yeah, Although Fedor. you might have recognized him from previous experience in the show. He was on, yeah, the, he's on, he's on a couple yeah, of episodes. Yeah, he, he, was, he was on a couple of episodes. <laughs> um, the Pope's coming to Ireland, Kevin. Yeah, and uh, do you have your rosary beads and your Saint Joseph? Mark? Well, it's it's the whole thing. I'm I'm an atheist bastard. Like I don't believe in any of it. So um, I'm sorry the about language. the language. I apologize for the language to I'm all joking. those. Uh, Use all the language there. you want. But uh, yeah, this whole thing about twenty million to to bring the Pope to Ireland, pay for a first class bleeding ticket, put him up a hotel, bring him over to Fino, day or night, whatever. You're way really you want angry. Fino. I, I just don't like the way they spend all this money on shy. Well, what what was the figure? their money yeah i think it was 20 million and in 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 light of everything that just happened with that hotel the metro the in ballymun who losing all their property so they had a lot of fam families without homes which there is a housing crisis in, in ireland at the Serious moment housing crisis. so you have a lot of families without homes housed in the metro hotel in ballymun i think it was yeah and then thankfully nobody was hurt no like thankfully there was no there's no injuries now obviously some people's lives have gone up in smoke in terms of yep. all their belongings all that sort of stuff and but they have a they actually have a we'll pr probably put a link in the youtube uh, for they have they have kind of a, a campaign going on to get to raise issues. money yeah. um but so our country has a, a housing crisis um so they decided to spend 20 million to bring the pope over it makes sense you know our, our beautiful country is yeah i know we well, might get a bit of flack for this whole thing but like it is a bit bollocks like i know the, ireland was a different country when he when he came the last time it really was like it, the world was different yeah um, and, and you know the thing was like uh like my family uh all went to that yeah and then obviously you have the pope's cross and stuff now um and it was kind of a major talking point thing is it's the pope's cross mm -hmm. in phoenix park yeah I think that commemorated the spot to where he gave the speech. Oh, fair enough. At least I think that's where it is. If I'm wrong, someone tell me in the comments. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a strange one. That um, that was kind of a, 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 like my family all spoke about that. But I just yeah. don't feel like religion has the same grasp really on the I, world I don't as it think, did. I don't think it does. Like, like I don't think it matters as much. Basically, I don't think it matters at all anymore. And I think I think the power that the church used. To I love have what it does to people. I respect the sentiment that, yeah. that uh, uh, holds in some people. Um, well, yeah, I just don't see why we need to spend tw no, twenty million just seems huge. Yeah, like and like the whole thing with the queen coming over a few years ago, like it's it's kind of understandable that the, the security and all that because there still is a whole issue there and this that the other and animosity. But like, 
you don't need to spend 20 million to secure the Pope. I'm sorry, Ireland yeah, is a, is a don't. like, they don't. Ar- Ireland's a Catholic country, a Christian country, whatever, uh, mostly. And I don't think you really should be worried about anything in Ireland. And they also think it's going to be 20 million anyway. Buy him a first class ticket, put him up in a nice hotel, bring him to Fino, let him speak, and then say goodbye to, what's his name, Francis, is it? I hope. <laughs> I, I hope so. I don't know. Like, I'm waving to Francis. <laughs> um, but, I'm going to get fed yeah. or after you. But. Anyway, enough religion. We live yeah. in a time where uh, the white rhino just went extinct. Yeah, that poor rhino, Jesus, they, uh, like, they were so desperate to try and get him, uh, to get some money to get that Funding, whole, they uh, put him on Tinder. They put him on fucking Tinder. Now, like, he's, You're coursing a lot. I know, of course. What's up with your language? I'm a little bit excited about this episode. <laughs> you know Just I mean? a little bit. Yeah, it's, 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 but yeah, now, there are two female white rhinos left. His daughter and his granddaughter. And his granddaughter. So I'm, I'm guessing there can be something done. Yeah, well, that's how, that's how like, uh, pedigree breeding But I, 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 hope, I hope they have, like, other um, semen frozen somewhere. Ah, uh, yeah, I'd say they do. Because to like, inseminate one of them females with their, their own relative's sperm would be kind of weird, no? No, but that's that's how pedigrees and stuff and dogs and they works. They keep like, it in the family, They keep you? it in the family. It's close so the they British can. royal family, but we won't say anything on them. Yeah, we're saying nothing about that. Yeah. yeah Jesus. We probably just got thrown off the air now for that one comment. <laughs> but yeah, oh, anything okay. else going on? Besides Russian spies attacking or being attacked in England all the time. I got kicked out of England now. Huh? You see, you see the whole thing about the Russian spies in Ireland? Oh, not the Russian spies in Ireland, oh Jesus. The Russian embassy, they basically said um, if they push them out of Ireland, they'll see it as an unfriendly act. I'm like, what's that supposed to I mean? I have Russia? no idea what's going on there, but I got to sit down with Spike. Yeah. Spike, Gary O'Sullivan, for anybody who doesn't know, um, who has a fight the night before Triple G mm. and Canelo. And he just got announced as fighting Canelo after In that September. fight. September. Isn't it September? Win well, or lose, he's September. fighting. And I think if Canelo wins or he loses, decides the outcome of the venue and stuff mm. like that. But yeah, win or lose, Spike is fighting Canelo which is huge I think from what Spike was saying it was going to either be in Texas or Las Vegas was it yeah I'm not sure whether we can we can reveal that but no it was on it was, it was he was saying about it, it could have been it's, it's, it could have been in Texas or Las Vegas are we allowed to speak about it did he so. did he admit it not sure well either way when he fights him in one location Canelo loses he fights him in another location mm. I think unless it's because Mexico so close yeah. to Texas yeah and then Texas has a huge Mexican community yeah, exactly. so I'd imagine if Canelo wins there supposedly is a stadium in Texas that they could put the match on. Ah, yeah, I'm sure that, that, that we haven't ever revealed anything that's too fucking. Yeah, but you just don't want to be getting people in trouble, you know. Yeah. No one will interview, give, an, give us an interview anymore. Yeah. Or they won't tell us that off the record. Yeah, exactly. But um, Tyson Fury. Yeah, signing with Frank Warren. That's going to be an interesting. What? One. What's the story there? Because he signed with MTK. Yeah, but that's like he's he's a he's an MTK fighter, but I'm assuming it's a promotional type of contract to promote yeah. the fights in general. And they're saying that he could return as quick as this summer in summer. Manchester. Well, the lad has lost, like, I think it's close to five stone now doing that whole uh, keto I can diet. imagine he's, like, literally chomping at the bit to go again. Yeah, I if, see. If his bit. mind is back in the right place, which it seems to be, his body is, is seems to be back in shape. He Anytime you listen to him or you're looking at him on social media, he even did a takeover of MTK's Instagram the other yeah. day. Now, I thought he would have put up more content. Mm. Um, but he just, he seems to have that his mojo back. For want of a better he word, he seems like he's he's back in a good humor. Like, like mm. he, he's he's uh, publicly always said he has a bit of an issue with uh, his emotions and kind of that kind of stuff. So it's good to see him back because I think he's the the, the best fighter to watch in and outside the ring. Like I seen I seen a whole comment there saying um, Joshua said that he's the one that revived the heavyweight division and uh, Fury wrote under it was something along the lines of yeah right son or whatever. He beat Klitschko and all that. No, I don't un- think until no, no, in fairness, it kind of happened around the same time. But until uh, Fury stopped the monotonous Klitschko beats another opponent, beats yeah. another opponent, beats another opponent, the exact same way. Exactly. Un- until Klitschko lost to Fury, then it kind of opened doors. I'm and gonna it say a, it was a different type of loss than what uh, Klitschko. Uh, but it leaves it leaves us in this kind of. Uh, weird paradox with the heavyweight division at the moment is because you have so much which way we're going to go what direction it's going to go there's a bit of mystery because you don't know when Tyson's going to come back mm. if he is going to come back yeah. we're all hoping he comes back but then you have uh, Wilder who just beat Ortiz then you have Park or Joshua yeah. next weekend give me your give me your opinion on the Wilder and Ortiz fight in the sense of the scorecards and the fight Re- really quickly because I don't want to get caught up on that fight because yeah. most people have probably recapped it and know what's going mm. on um 
I thought it was a good fight. Yeah. I thought Wilder boxed better than yeah. he has in in a long time. Um I don't know whether he can beat any of the top heavyweights. I mean Ortiz is a great heavyweight. But he but he was a couple of years past yeah. pretend to be thirty eight. <laughs> but he's he's definitely past his prime. Yeah. Um good win for uh, for Wilder. What the judges were watching, I have no idea. Yeah, no, I seen the card and it was ridiculous. And Brendan Chubb would want to get off Showtime's uh um. fancy parts because <laughs> saying saying that Wilder was winning that fight actually was. Brendan Chubb robbed our concept yeah we yeah you want to explain what we're thinking about down basically no I'm just saying he robbed the concept of mixing boxing and mixed martial arts and anything in between yeah I kind of agree like he's, he he's, really did Brendan yeah. Chubb my lawyer's coming after you but please, please don't do that but yeah no <laughs> he's uh, employed by like one of the biggest uh, casting agents in the world like what fuck <laughs> Do you know what I find hilarious with Brendan Chubb at the moment? Yeah. He tells everybody to stay in their lane. He keeps saying. But he went out of his lane straight away. He he has his fingers dipped in that many cookie jars at the moment. I don't know how he eats. Yeah. Like he's literally he's Brendan Chubb, uh, E Entertainment. Mm. Brendan Chubb below the belt. Brendan Chubb fighting the kid. Mm. Brendan Chubb, God knows what else he's doing. Is he acting? No, but I know they're stand-up the, comedian. Stand-up comedian. They're, no, he, don't they get asked me wrong. Him to do a bit of acting in the past, but he said no. I do, I do like Brendan Chubb. I like his, po- I, I like his podcast. Since, and since to he's been taken over by Showtime, uh, he's too controlled and his opinions aren't his own anymore and he's saying dumb things like Wilder was winning that fight on the scorecards. And he, but he admittedly said to himself that he spoke to Showtime after the first episode and said, I'm not reading from a prompter again. I need to do it myself. Give me a few footnotes and let me go. So I haven't watched the second episode. I don't know. I think it's out. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a, a watch of it and um, kind of did you see um, last night uh, Aaron who looks after our scrap chat social media posted Aaron McKenna yeah I did see I'm, I'm gonna be honest I had no idea who that young fellow was I heard of the kid but I've never seen I've never seen him fight like I'd never no. I've, like, and then there's, I looked into a bit of a story about like how young he is and he signed by Golden Boy and then I obviously watched the fight yeah well I watched the highlights of the fight uh, very exciting yeah, it was, it was a there's good there's there's a good excitement in in Irish boxing. But yeah. the, the thing about fo- Irish fighting in general, there's always been a good uh, pedigree of fighters from Ireland. But it's 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 dependent on who they sign with, their promoters, how they're how they're promoted in general. Like the reason Connor is so big with MMA and in fight in general is because he got into the biggest uh, promotion in the world. But he also was the best promoter since Ali. Like. He promoted himself. He he, he well, spoke out and said he. Chael Sonnen every- did well since Ali. Uh, but you know, no, I know he's I know he's but, better than uh, than Sonnen. I'm yeah. just saying Sonnen did. But at do the it. end of the day, like you can't take anything away from from Connor in in the sense that there's something he about backed up everything. There's something about Irish fighters that sells. I think it's the connection to the I, world. I think it's the Damn, oh coffee. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's the uh, I don't know the attitude how how we carry ourselves. It's our. I think we have a sense of humor that most people don't. Uh, most other countries don't. We have this dry witness about us. Yeah, and I think I think what's what what happens with it, like we the Irish people have that kind of weird, uh, hilarious kind of sense of humor. But Plus, yeah, it's it, the fact that we kind of took over the world by emigrating everywhere, so everyone has this sense of Irishness in but them. That, but that's what I was going to say. And like, if they if don't you, have if it, you in go them. to um, like Boston, for example. Now I was in Boston before, and I've met a lot of Irish Americans from Boston. They're like a souped-up version of all the lads from around here, like, and they just want to be Irish so much. They really so do. Any, they anybody really, that is really Irish, they cling to them. Yeah, they really do, and they have the Irish bars with the shamrocks all over the place. Like even around, the, we're in, in Mitri at the moment, and we don't have Irish bars with shamrocks all over the place. Like yeah, well, one actually, hold on, Luckies. The new new bar, they yeah. The, the this whole area is changing. Yeah, the whole but area's um, changing. Joshua Parker next weekend as well. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a good fight. I, do, I don't think it's going to be the mauling that every everybody thinks it's going to be. I think it's going to be a mauling. I don't know. I think, I think like you were saying about... Um, uh, Parker just barely got by Yui Fury. Yeah. Um, no, don't, don't get me wrong. Yui Fury, excellent boxer. Really awkward. Moves really well. Mm. Throws shots from awkward angles. Joshua, doesn't, it's just going to stand in front of him, try that one-two. The long one-two from the amateurs. Yeah, but I just... I just don't see Parker Park on matching up there anywhere. But I just, uh, but I think I, I like my personal opinion. It's just to put it on that my personal opinion about uh, fires that they say he didn't look well against him. He didn't look well against him. It's, I'm not saying he didn't look well against Fury. I just mean Anthony Joshua is levels above Huey Fury. Yeah, but I think I think it's it's the stage that you get set on. So like that fight between with Fury was a bit. 
obviously it's lower level like they're talking about this fight now Park and Joshua it's it's a big fight like I, I just think we all know why that fight is happening and it's only happening because Parker has a belt and they're trying to unify they, they want to have he wants to have every belt other than that I don't think the fight gets made Um, I think the only reason it got made at, at this stage is because Fury's out mm. so Parker wasn't around and he wasn't a champion obviously and Fury had all his belts or whatever it would be Joshua and Fury. That's what it would be. Wilder isn't as big as the Americans make him out to be in the world. Like, he really isn't. No, Fury he's 40 and 0. Uh, 39 KOs. Yeah, with, with 42 lads who bleed and drove up from the country. Probably have him. negative records as well. Like, that's it. Like, they have bad records. And um, just with, with, with that fight, if... So, if Joshua beats Parker, like we think it's going to happen. Yeah. Does he then fight Wilder? Um... I think that's that's this Wild. whole thing with the Joshua deal with the UFC there that that that, that, that rumored that could be the whole idea because the Americans to have the Wilder yeah, that, Joshua that's fight under what that could be like Showtime, um, they're they're promoting yeah obviously they're promoting Wilder because Brendan Schaub is l- like fucking kissing Wilder's ass thinking that he won that Ortiz fight he didn't he wasn't winning that Ortiz fight full stop but the judges saw it differently. But I think that that's all those connections. Showtime, Shab, the UFC, yeah. Connor fought with Showtime, Mayweather. It's all there to put Joshua to fight Wilder. And it could be the reason they put out that rumour about... To have uh, co- some kind of super promotion. It could be the reason. It could Maybe. be the reason. We don't know. Rumours are rumours until if, we get if credible information. Joshua in. gets past Parker yeah. and fights Wilder. Mm. Tyson Fury comes back, fights... Maybe Parker. Maybe Parker. Maybe Parker. And then the winner of both of those fights then goes off and has the biggest heavyweight fight in history. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be yeah, like, the, let's, the let's biggest be modern heavyweight fight I in history. I would pick Joshua to be Wilder. I would pick Fury to win against whoever he comes back. If they then go have Joshua Fury, boom. I'm saying it now. Wow. Fury will outbox uh, Joshua. I think he will you know what? We can look at that closer yeah. to the fight. Um, just on the domestic scene... Um, Cal the Clash uh, five is this weekend. Yeah, um, I just seen Martin Quinn. Unfortunately, had to he didn't pull out, but his opponent pulled out with a hand yeah. injury. Which from now on, Martin Martin was going into that fight with with an injury himself. Mm. Not a major. I don't think it was a major injury, but as you know, Kevin, most most people who are competing and fighting at a high level or any sort of level, you time. don't go into any fight one hundred percent. No, you which don't. is but that. Cal the Clash um, actually did a really good production for um, with irishboxing.com yeah and they had a, a ground zero or round zero round zero yeah it's, good which was, it's a good yeah, concept like I enjoy for it. Uh, McAfee and Donovan yeah and that rematch so that's if you're around Dublin this week and make sure you get to um, the stadium no no sorry you're no, wrong, wrong. Yeah, uh, the good uh, council uh, guy, good council guy club, up in sorry. Germany just beside the Lewis stop if you're looking for transport thanks for correcting um, me and also uh, unfortunately um, someone I actually I uh, look up to it a lot in terms of fighting. I really like his style. Philip Sutcliffe has had to pull out of his fight with yep. Tyrone McKenna. Um, and has been replaced by Anthony Upton Jr. Yeah. So it's not Dublin v Belfast. It's Belfast v Belfast now. And it's still a great fight. Tyrone McKenna and Anthony Upton Jr. is a great fight. On a great card up in the SS Arena in Belfast. Uh, headlined by Frampton v Dunner. Donner. Donner. For an interim WBO. The WBO interim belt. <laughs> because the champion has a word jaw. From the Scott Quick fight, it looks it seems like yeah, supposedly yeah, supposedly you always say supposedly. So it that's, could be that's the only well, that's the only reason why they're gonna have an interim belt in anyway. Yeah. So that's that's what's happening there. Um, which I think we'll both agree that we see Frampton beat Denier. Denier is just slightly past. Yeah, but it, again, at the end of the day, like um, like Frampton does have a few fights left in him. He really does. Like he, I, I, I like the way he fights. He, he, he has a scrap. Like he's a good boxer. But he has a scrap, but Denier has the experience to beat him. You know, that's he does, he's he's going to have like. that experience of those huge fights. Yep, Not does. that Frampton hasn't had big fights, but maybe more of them on the near side. Yeah, really. Like, like but I still, I can't, I, can't, I can't see Frampton losing this fight. Not in Belfast. Not the way they're setting her up. No, Not I yet, don't think no. So. no I Which is, so. do you know what? It's, it's going to be it's gonna be a great test of Frampton and, and how far he's going to go in his career. Yeah, because like you, you know yourself, if you, um, it doesn't matter what age a fighter is. Let's say you get a 40-year-old pro who knows what he's doing and you, sit, you go in with him. And you're an 18 year old, 19 year old, up and comer. The pro can play around with you when he wants to. Like, because he has that experience. Like, he can put the pressure on you. But he, you he, he, controls, he controls the pace. Exactly. Exactly. Like, that, that's what I do when I, I, I be teaching people but, and stuff like that. But that's only if the experienced guy comes out. And, 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 and yeah. 
I suppose. But there's loads, there's loads of ways of looking at it. But I think both of us can agree that we we expect Frampton to probably pass that test and pass it with flying colours. Yeah, and I I'm a, a fucking avid Frampton fan. Like I've always I've been fans for years. Like I was after a couple of fights live. I've met him a few times. He's no, he's 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 a lovely bloke. It was actually um, uh, so for the Mar- Martin Marquez fight um a few years ago, and we were in the Europa Hotel. It was funny. All the lads I went up with, uh, all boxing fans or whatever. But they're all kind of getting on a Frampton train. Let's just say that. And I'm standing in the hotel. And uh, Frampton standing there looking around. Just, just None of them knew who he was? No, I just goes, there's Carl Frampton. And they're all like, oh, Carl. Pictures. And I'm just standing back on. Yes, hadn't bastards. got a clue two minutes ago. hadn't got a clue two minutes ago. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Irish boxing and just Irish fighters in general. Something about us sells worldwide and Irish fighters. If you're good. Like, look at Michael Conlon. That was Mike, a lovely stoppage. Michael that, that was Conlon is stoppage. on a tear. I mean, first fight, all the hype he has in his professional career yeah. goes on a tear, and he's still now, albeit his level of opposition isn't great. Yeah, we I know that from we know that from previous podcasts. Getting told like the way they set it up. But we uh, posted uh, Michael Conlon's last fight on Scrap Chat Facebook page, and it exploded. Fifty thousand people it reached. It's more now. Is it more now? Yeah, it's more now. But we we posted that in uh, the forty two dot e shared it. It got shared everywhere, but we had a reach of 50,000 people. Yeah. Like, and our Facebook page only it's has... Like 600 likes. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. So that reach for us was astronomical and just goes yeah. to show you the draw that Michael Conlon yeah. has Second. this early. And I'm wondering whether some of that was to do with his natural ability and some of it got to do with Connor kind of grabbing him and going, yeah, I'll give you some exposure here. Well, well Connor kind of come out with him. Yeah, well, no, that's I, what I mean. I with that coke. Yeah, I also think it's that whole uh, thing with the Olympics. And I think that... That it's kind of become a signature thing now it as well him, it put him in the limelight at the end of the day like mm. it might put him it within the the bad time the bad time and did the you see the article that came out that said that that fight was possibly fixed it literally said it was fixed mm. they said that the coach was told before conlon fought that he didn't have a chance of winning did you see what that lad got that lad after the conlon fight wasn't allowed to fight because of what conlon did to him he was that badly beat he up he couldn't go into the final was it a final it uh, he couldn't win the next round yeah. on enemy. I don't, I don't yeah. know what it was, but yeah, he couldn't continue. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like it, it really was, and it, it, it just it, goes to show you the issues with boxing. You know, when we we were at a, we were at an event, combat sports. We were at an event recently, um, an Irish boxing event, and you could literally you can see, you can see who's picked to lose. Yeah, it's crazy. It's actually like, don't get me wrong. Obviously, people pad the records and there's journeymen for a reason, but. In boxing, I feel like you spot it more blatantly. You can literally see who the guy is supposed you mean to lose. You can see the lad who has the good management, the uh, high training, and then you see the other lad that gets brought over. Basically, probably been eating you see a guy come in with a lot of sponsors on his shorts, in shape, with a, a team behind him. And, and then, and then you see a guy come in with, yeah, Lonsdale, uh, the shorts are probably been more seven, eight times. Yeah. <laughs> They're peeling off at the side. Yep, His gut exactly. is kind of hanging out. And he has one fella who he probably picked up from the background to do his corner. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, listen, it well, is what it is. Even even on that one, like like remember I showed you that video about your man who was the the journeyman fighter, uh, Tony Tubbs. Uh, Tony Tubbs, I think. What was, a name for a journeyman! I think it's something along Tony those Tubbs. lines. And uh, is that the one where the crowd were booing him? Yeah, your man was getting booed, and he was like, "Okay, if you want to be assholes about it, boom!" Knocks the guy. The guy's up. fucking yeah, gone. I remember that. Yeah, I remember saying that. That's yeah. it. If you want to go watch that, is it Tony Tubbs? I think it's Tony Tubbs. I'll put the but link just basically go up and look, yeah. Journeyman. Yeah, it was a Journeyman. Uh, a Journeyman. Uh, they served that. They served that purpose. I'm not saying, but it's just saying in boxing, I tend to see it. Like I don't, I don't, I don't see it as obvious anywhere else other than boxing. Yep. And yep. we see it like we see padded records happening in K1 in MMA, but I tend to notice it in boxing. Yeah, I yeah. agree. But MMA was. We are literally entering a period of mixed martial arts that is just for any fan do you like mma no i didn't know you liked MMA. do you like the mma no do you do the mma do get the get the joke correctly do you do the ufc do you do do you know that ufc yeah do you know that ufc that conor mcgregor fella fights in who's he i don't know (laughs) but actually did you watch lfa uh, I've seen I've seen a few of the highlights and I've seen that. So let me just let me notes because I have to he- just because I don't know their names up here. But mm. Drew Chapman, for anybody who hasn't watched this, go look it up. Drew Chapman was fighting a guy called Irvin's Ayola, and they were both undefeated heavyweights. Um, and basically, what happened is Chapman ended up on the bottom, 
Ayola went to throw a hammer fist. Chapman lifted up his knee and Ayola knocked himself out. Right? That's a serious analysis so he, of that fight. He was, yeah, but he was throwing a hammer fist and he landed on your man's shin. Yeah. But basically, Drew Chapman got up and decided to stand on his unconscious opponent, <sighs> back, stand on his back, that and do a, a front somersault directly landing on top of him. But he bounced off him like a fucking vault horse. And he's a heavyweight. Like, what are, you, what are you thinking of? It's fucking dangerous. Like, Go that- look it up um, if you haven't seen it. Like, and for someone, like, so that was Drew Chapman's eight professional fight. Yeah. And he does that. I think. Was that for a title? No, I don't think so. I was on the undercard, was mm. it? Yeah. Because I was watching, t- I think they, they finished the title. But it's kind of gone viral, years. and I'm sure, uh, like, go look at it. We might but even try to throw it on the page. You lose your man as a fucking vault and horse, like, out gymnastics. It's ridiculous. Like, that shit that goes on, like, like I don't think I've ever seen like that. I've seen a few, like, bell rings and you know, you see, you see, you see little things like, uh, you know, say in boxing when a fighter peaks the back, they yeah. do it a little bit of humping things yeah. to try to disrespect. Fill. They do it as well in MMA. I think we remember uh, Randy Gator spanking. Um, yeah. uh, James Tony, was it? No, 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 no. Who was no. that? Did he spank? Was it Tio? I think no, I can't remember. Chuck. Well, let's for, say for example, he spanked someone, yeah. and anyway, it he, was Tio, and then Tio tried to say he tapped. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. So you see little bits of different things, but when your opponent is unconscious on the floor, and you're gonna not only stand on his back and surf him, but then to do a front flip straight onto him, yeah, it was just very strange. And it's dangerous. And, and rightfully so, uh, disqualified. Yeah, 100% even though his opponent was out cold and he had technically won the fight, yeah. he then go and just wrecked it for himself. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, go look it up. LFA thirty six was the mm. event if you want to see it. Um, Sean O'Malley is out of surgery. Yeah, I'm he, liking that kid. Like I really do like him. Sugar Sean, bit b- b- like you either love him or you hate him. I think, and everybody seems to be buying into him at the moment. He came uh, came and, up on the Dane White and, uh, contender why series. Why do you think people are liking him? Because he has an Irish connection. Yeah, there oh, you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, more Irish connections, but Sugar Sean. Sugar what an Sean. afro. Yeah, he's some hair in him. Yeah. He so really does. I think that he looks like Khabib. Uh, <laughs> you know Khabib's hat? He looks like it was brown, Khabib yeah. actually lost some weight and, and done the diet really, so really, really, really correctly. He is going to be out until later on this year. Yeah, that, that's kind of sad because he seemed He was like being he lined up for some big fights. Yeah, he was. Like, what he, some big news. Kamara Usman. Yeah, against that. Uh, Ponzibinho. Uh, I had to be a match Chile? for you. Yeah, you see, you see, fight nine one twenty nine. Yeah, in in Chile, mm. which basically leaves Darren Till left with Wonderboy. Now, if you uh, pull up, pull up the the welterweight rankings there. I got them. I got them. So, give me just the top five there. So, I know right. Till is number nine. See, Thompson is number one. We have RDA, Colby Covington. Actually, Colby Covington, RDA. They're yeah, fighting they're, for an, an interim belt. So that the takes them two out of it. Then you take Usman and Ponzibinho out. It literally just lives till. Now I know... Uh, See, we have like like Neil Magny's number nine. And then you have Darren Till. Oh, the UFC made a mistake on their rankings. They have uh, Kamaru Usman is seven and Darren Till is seven. So what could you do there? You could put them two together if but they're they seven. But, they, but Usman is fighting Ponzibinho. Know, but just saying a mistake but on the UFC it website. literally... And I saw an article on it. I think it's Till. Wonderboy. That's what they're saying. There's no yep. 100% confirmation. Everybody wants Wonderboy. Um, things have come out. But, like, I'd be looking at this. Like, Damian Moyes is probably going to... Like, it would, be a, it would be a bad matchup for uh, Till, in a sense. Like, it would just become a jiu-jitsu match. Unless, Against Damian Moyes? Yeah. Like, Moyes is going to throw digs. We know that. He, he wants I, to throw digs. I think Wonderboy makes sense. The reason why I think it makes sense is because the UFC is very clearly building Darren Till oh Jesus like they moved now fair enough he destroyed Donald Cerrone and he deserves all the credit but he's obviously getting a lot of attention but the thing about that is they they, they, they're they're, what's the word they're hyping him so much that they moved but they're they're giving him an event in his hometown which they did for Connor yeah so like they need they basically need him to be someone of merit in his next fight and that's why I don't think Leon um, Leon Edwards is it Edwards I think it is yeah it is Leon Edwards he called him out I was going to say Roberts, but Leon Roberts is the referee. Leon <laughs> Leon Edwards called him out, but I don't think they're going to give that fight to Leon. No. Leon Edwards, like he's uh, his brother. A fair Fabian. play to him. He used that moment to try and get that fight. And, you know, fair play to him. But I think I just, you said, uh, we're I the two best fighters in the UK or the two best fighters in Europe. Too, too soon. Way too soon. He's, he's, he's ranked 14 and he went up like he, mm. on the UFC. Like, the Maya fight, Jorge Masvidal, 
uh, it might be a bit of a slugfest, but Till would stop him. And then Mike Mike Perry was in contention to fight uh, Darren Till, but that's just gone now because Mike Perry is at the drop on a couple of fights, I think. And uh, his girlfriend dropped him as well. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, I apologise, but he did. But as a fan, I want to see Wonder Boy Darren Till. As a fan, I want to see Lawler fight him. Robbie Lawler against yeah, Darren Till? I wouldn't mind seeing that next. Yeah, but the thing is, like... How I long is Woodley going to be out for? Woodley, literally, I think on his Instagram, he had a, he finished that surgery on his hand. It was, and I think his latest update was going to start, start hitting the hand on the bag. So, it's probably going to be six months, like. But I hope it's Wonderboy. I really hope it's Wonderboy. Because for striking fans, I don't think either of them is taken to the ground. I think they're going to stand up. Wonderboy is going to be as awkward as he is with that like front leg side kick. Try to keep Darren Till away and catch him. And Darren Till is going to be trying to come in with those elbows. Those elbows. Yeah, but also Darren Till has a, not a bad ground game either. Like he, he Obviously, he left Brazil. He speaks Brazil, Portuguese. Speak, like. Strange. Scouts are speaking Portuguese. It's really weird. Like He, yeah. was, he, was, he was doing an interview in, in the, on UFC Unfiltered or whatever it was. And the girl started going, oh, obrigado. And he just threw the papa back. I was like, Jesus. Fair yeah, no, he actually lived there. He got stabbed in, in Liverpool and, and was sent over by a coach. And fair play to him, he did it. <laughs> sent to Brazil. Yeah, where he go ahead, get, it, get out of Dodge, get better. Yeah, go, And here go. he is now on the cusp of greatness. Yeah. And, like, in terms of what he has, like, he has literally captured the imagination of the UFC, of the fans. Like, I, I don't know what it is about him, but he just has that. He has it. You yeah, know? there's there's nothing you can you, you can't put your finger on it. Yeah, like you can't. It's it, it. We don't understand like Connor, like Connor, um, Chuck back in the day, like just just things like that. But you can't put your finger on it. Till has changed also a little bit. If you know, yeah, he's, he's, he's come got a little bit more vocal. A whole lot more vocal. Now, in fairness, he was always confident, but and Vinny Sherman bleeding sounds like he's his da. <laughs> yeah. Like, Joe. Did you watch? Did you watch Vinny and Liam? On I was uh, watching uh, Vinny and Liam and uh, Liam Harrison and, the Joe, and, and, and then the Joe, Joe on the pads on him as well. Joe Hogan, I love you, Joe Hogan. Like is Joe Rogan like um, like everybody watches Joe Rogan? He's the biggest podcast in the world and and all that. But I want to be a fifty year old man like Joe Rogan. I he's don't know about all the steroids and all, but like. Well, at least he's honest about it. Yeah, he's, he's, he said if he pissed before his pits even reaches the cup, he go woo. Yeah, the uh, melt. I was cup. probably very loud on that microphone. Yeah, and uh, he said pit. Did he? Yeah, pit. Ah, well. <laughs> piss, pit. Either way. Um, speaking of this fella here. Fedor. Right El Fedor. Frank Mir coming up soon. Will I bobble his head? See if I'm not going to round the shot. I, I think when you bobble his head. bobble his head. When you bobble his head, he looks like he's uh, very impatiently waiting on something. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, he's fighting Frank Mir. And that is April 29th. Yeah. And if uh, any MMA fans pick up what we did with Fedor, just, uh, just notice about who he's on top of. Just saying, like. He nice, I think it's a nice On like, top of Mark Hunt He's on top of Mark Hunt You wanted to get that in there didn't you Yeah I just wanted to get that in yeah. there I thought that was a nice little On like, top of Mark Hunt and not for the first time Yeah exactly <laughs> Hey But yeah <clears throat> I love both Fedor and Frank Mir And Frank hasn't fought in two years Two OGs yeah The last time Frank fought was He lost to Mark Hunt I think Yeah Did he beat Mark Hunt or lose to Mark Hunt Mark Hunt Which ties in lovely with the book Yeah no, well, well See we don't know everything I think he did And, and Fedor Last fought against Matt Mitrion and lost. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, no, I think I think Frank lost to Mark Hunt. Definitely lost. Ah, yeah, we're having a. But Fader are thirty-six yeah. and five. Thirty-six and five. That's not even a salty record. Like, how long has Fader been fighting? But it, it sounds like his record should be a whole seven hundred and two. Yeah, and Amir is eighteen and eleven. It sounds like That's his record. That's salty enough. Like that is a salty record. Not really. It's a decent enough. Like he was former UFC heavyweight champion. Mm. But who do you got in that fight? Against that? Uh, Such a tricky fight. Okay. Because, right. for instance, both of them obviously good uh, ground specialists. Uh, both can knock people out. Frank Mir, I would, both of them are past the prime. I don't, I don't know how Frank's going to, two years out at his age, I just don't know what Frank Mir's going to turn up. But if he turns up switched on, Frank Mir's dangerous. Like, I don't know what fight it was. Because um, I, I was following Frank for a long time and I just like them fight like just fight no, you, you know like what it is? i think it's a it, it's his iq i like listening to him he's, commentate he's, i like listening to him analyze stuff. yeah but um like like on him like um i remember watching a few fights and he'd be fighting tubby all right he'd be fighting nice and tubby he looks like he didn't cut much weight blah blah, blah. and then he come into the a couple months later and he looked like he's at there just like 
cutting all the carbs and uh, he lifted he was, all the weights. Do you think he was eating those same steaks as... Uh, yeah, Canelo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, on that, Canelo got uh, suspended. By yeah, the, it was a temporary it's suspension. It's a temporary suspension, like, at the moment. Like, like, it, you know what, listen, we talked about boxing and the little... The, I think they're going to protect him from... Yeah, they will. Like, I don't know what's going on Golden there, Boy, but... but like, it, it, the, the thing about that, like, they, they'll, uh, they'll protect him, but they have to... It's like with Conor with the whole fine. They have to show that they, they still control the, 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 the kind of narrative, in the sense. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, back to Mir and uh, Fedor. I think that if Mir is smart and he as you said he has a good fight IQ I think he could take it I really do I think he could take it Fedor doesn't look like the old Fedor he like even that fight against um, Mitrio no back in Russia was it Maldonado oh he lost that fight <laughs> yeah but he, exactly yeah, do you know what I mean yeah. like like Mir is a, is a higher higher level uh, Mitrio beat him and Mir could leg lock the shit out of Do you of know what that's that's gonna be one of them fights where I can watch and I genuinely don't care who wins. No, it's I just a good, I would love MMA an exciting fight. fight. Yeah. Um speaking of MMA fights, Gary Tonin made his MMA debut on one FC, did you say? No, I didn't. I knew it was happening and I didn't Gary Tonin I didn't understand. So anybody who doesn't know is the jujitsu specialist. Like literally actually he's always had good rivalry with Dylan Dennis. Yeah. Um but Gary Tonin is a beast Comes in and um, fights a four and three guy. So mm. a guy, not a great record, but experienced guy. Yeah. Drops him in the first round. Mm. Steps in with a straight right. Boom. Drops him. And we're like, holy God. Gary Town and the jiu-jitsu guy here is throwing bombs. Yeah, but you know, he's been, like, I've been following him for a while. Like, just, you know, you're watching the... Following him for a while, but didn't watch his first fight. I fucked up the time zone, Shane. That's okay? all right. But I've been watching him and I was saying to you that basically, if you look at his kind of the... Whatever you call him, the fucking countdowns for Paul Harris. I feel like stuff. being John Danaher. There's four pins for jiu-jitsu, Kevin. <laughs> Can you explain the first pin? What's it, the legs, is it? Oh, my God. I no, can't remember. You're a smart guy. Is it? Is it no. the legs? And then Anyways, we'll but anyway, but what I was saying is yeah. about Gary Tonin is that even on those um, kind of countdowns that he was doing a few years ago, he was talking about MMA. Mm. So he's New York, am I right? Yeah, Hendo Grace is in New York, Dan Danaher's in New York. Yeah. He The Danaher Death Squad. But he was obviously working on a striking for a while. Like he he's a high level jiu-jitsu. Well guy. if you look at his fight last night, he looked like what was yeah. it last night? Well, I don't know what the time zone has me messed up. Yeah. But yeah, it was he, on he, one. He, he was striking was okay. Yeah, exactly. Now, so as I said, I I didn't look into the guy. The guy is four and four now, but it was four and three before that. So experienced guy. Good force fight. Yeah. But goes in and is looking decent standing up. And said afterwards, and I have his tweet here. That was the most insane experience in my life. Fighting MMA is the craziest thing I've ever done by a factor of 10. So he has he, on, on like he's that. competed in the highest levels of jiu-jitsu and says his first MMA fight is the insanest thing he's ever done. But it's like, it's like when you roll and then you May I the call it now? Dennis fights his first fight in Bellator in Chicago. Yeah. Do we see them have an MMA fight? Because I know I'd like to see that. He signed to one. He signed to one fight championships, yeah, and they usually sign. Long. To, yeah, but they, they they're they're Speaking a huge. Of uh, Dylan Dennis. Did you see John McCulgan come out and throw some shade Dylan I Dennis's way? Did not so. So basically, John McCulgan, uh, Irish fighter. What's his nickname again? He used to be the SBG. I, I knew there was. I knew there was a nickname. I remember yeah, he beat a lot of SBG fighters, yeah. um, including Peter Queeley, James Heelan, mm. um, a few of them. But uh, yeah, he he wanted he kind of wanted that fight a long time ago yeah and dylan dana said that if he ever came to mma he would only fight his fight would be huge and it would be against a, a known fighter <laughs> right and he's fighting your so man Griffin, isn't so it? he used that as a reason to say sit down john mccolgan i don't know who you are i'm not going to fight you yeah john mccolgan when dylan dana's opponent was announced mm. tweeted what Dylan Dennis once said yeah. and then tweeted his opponent and his record and was like oh yeah when you go to MMA it's going to be a big fight watch I know, I, that, that, that's that guy Griffin isn't it something Griffin I'm not sure it is yeah, yeah he's, he's they're fighting on uh, the Chicago card but that's speaking of uh, strange just strange decisions um, Aaron Chalmers obviously Aaron from Geordie Shore fighting on the main card for Bellator 200 in London yeah. I understand they're building him, but why put him on the main card against a guy with a losing record? Like, like Aaron probably deserves that shot to be on the main card because of what he brings. 
does his opponent deserve to be on the main card of Bellator? And I seen people like Cameron Eltz and other MMA fighters comment on this and saying, look, you had people busting their ass their entire life yeah, trying to himself, get that shot. Sure. And a little bit of me goes, do we? Yeah, but it, it, it's the whole thing about that. So should Aaron have been the last fight on the prelims then? Like being like the main event of the prelims? Like the way, yeah, I know. Do you get saying. me? Like yeah, me- but the thing about it is, Shane, is that Aaron brings more eyes to Bellator um, than most of the fighters in Bellator. No, of course, but his he opponent really does. doesn't. His opponent doesn't. I know, but the thing about it is, it's like if you look at a like Wilder, for example, in the states. Sorry, you watch all his fights, boxing wise. Um, you won't know most of the lads he boxes, but you know he beat them all. Mm. It's they need to they need to get Aaron on the the big stage. And it's no, a, Aaron should be on the big stage. Be, um, He's three and now. Who, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's sure you know. Finishes but, in every fight? Yeah, but... The, yeah, salty, salty. But the thing about it is, is that um, they have him for a one-fight deal at the moment. A bit weird. On Bellator? Out, yeah, on Bellator. Yeah, but that's obviously to see the yeah, reaction, to see, to see the whether reaction. they want to invest yeah. in him for There was a big reaction when he was at BAM. I was there. Everybody wanted to talk well, to Aaron. But it's obviously because everybody knows him. Yeah. But I, I, just, I, just, I just don't <laughs> know whether his opponent deserves the shot. And I, I understand if they were going to have it on such a high magnitude like stage, yeah. they should have gave him a better opponent. Yeah, but people won't care who his opponent is. Exactly, they they're just, just trying to sell. It. They're just trying to sell tickets for the biggest Bellator show probably in a long time. Two hundred. They're trying to make it huge. Musashi's on that. Strain. Musashi. Yeah, Musashi's on it. Crow Cup Nelson. Yeah, that's gonna be a good. Fight. It's it's easy card. Which we're, hope, we're hoping. Shiver to, when I said that. We're hoping to go to. As far I'm gonna try go to. Yeah, as far as I know, we should be. Yeah. Um, we'll also be at Bama May, yeah, we'll be at Bama May 25th May 12th 12th sorry Bama I'm gonna like, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it now something big is happening with Kiefer Crosby for that card really I've been, I've been watching Kiefer's social media recently and, and mm. he keeps alluding to something big and Bama have put him on their Instagram a couple of times I don't know what's gonna happen but I'm, I'm gonna call it something big and finally something big coming Kiefer's way Kiefer's been performing yeah, keep has been doing well, like in Palma. Yeah, but even and, then, and it's gone about, gone about it the right way. Like yeah, let's just say his stable mate and his teammate Richard Coyley, um, got the shot at the world title force after two fights, was it? Yeah, two um, fights. Like he, he, you know, he, like he sold tickets. The same thing. He put bums and seats. Face of Palma. But, um, Kiefer has put the performances in, and it's done it quietly and calmly. And if he gets a shot at something mm. or he gets a big fight, I for one, I'm looking forward to see that. Yeah, I think I, he's earned yeah. whatever is coming his way. Yeah, it, 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 it'll be interesting to see what what they're gonna come out with. Cause cause Bam at the moment they're um they're quietly putting cards together and they're putting nice cards together. Like, yeah, they really are like that. That one with uh, Aaron and um whatever what was it was that a little in Newcastle, Newcastle. That was a nice little yeah. card. Colin Fletcher was on it and Colin with his crazy entrance and all. It was good. It was enjoyable. I seen Peter Creeley asking for uh, Peter Creeley got matched there today. Yeah, but he's matched. Oh, but I mean, he's matched over on ACB, is it? It's. I think it's. It's or one of those global, yeah, it's, whatever. It's one of those uh, but cards. Peter asked for Bama to match Kiefer with Freak Show. Freak Show. Mm-hmm. Really? And then someone else. Another. How does Freak Show make one fifty five? Another. Is he one fifty five? One fifty five. Well, then that won't happen for Kiefer because he's one seventy. Yeah, I th- yeah, I was right. Um, yeah. But you also see the mask for Nathan Jones as well. Nathan Jones, yeah. Um, so we'll we'll see what happens. I could be wrong about uh, Freak Show. Um, back to UFC. Frankie mm. Edgar match the Cubs Swanson. I think very fast. Uh, it's very very fast, especially after that fight with Brian Ortega. Like you wouldn't mind if it was a, a, a decision fight in the sense where Frankie lost and he wasn't damaged that much. But as Frankie, he never got brain damage. In that fight, he got brain damage. That he definitely elbow, got concussed. That, that elbow caused brain damage. Full stop, it did. It caused brain Now, I think damage. there's a, a couple of factors that possibly play into decision-making mm. behind that. I think... If you think of Frankie's mindset, he was probably unbelievably prepared for that fight. He probably f- never felt better, and he probably feels like, oh, I have something to prove. Mm. Then, obviously, the fact that the card is in New Jersey, his home. Yeah. So... I don't know whether he's doing the right decision and I don't know whether this is where his coaching and his management should come in and be like, listen, we understand you feel this way. We understand it's in New Jersey, but look what happened Michael Bisping. Yeah. It re- Loses to George St. Pierre, jumps back in against Calvin Calvin Gastelum, Gastelum and just gets absolutely destroyed. Well, Calvin is genuinely becoming a legend killer. Like he is. He's killing everybody. It's just his weight and stuff that really is really messing him up. I, I think. know, but I just, I just, funnily enough uh, about Frankie versus uh, Cub Swanson, both their last fights were losses to Brian Ortega, <laughs> which goes to show you what a tear that guy is on. <laughs> this lad has beaten everybody. Yeah. Is he 11 or no? And even in terms of uh, the card, the Tony Ferguson-Khabib card. Yeah. 
Um, That's on in two weeks. Shane. Renato Moicano. Yeah. Who was on the main card of that? Also, his last loss is against uh, Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega. It's mad. So yeah. that Brian Ortega is everywhere. I'm looking forward to see him fight Max Holloway. Max Holloway. But that's. I think it's going to be UFC fight week. I think that might be good if it does happen. But as I just alluded to, any MMA fan out there knows the division at the moment that's making a lot of noise is the lightweight division. Yeah. And in two weeks. Holy shit balls. Two El weeks. El Kikui. That's all I'm going to say. Khabib Tun. El Kikui. Khabib Tun. <laughs> we, we will see. We are literally going to get a lot of answers in two weeks. Yeah, it's got, it's going to be a, it's going to be an answer to a big question to see where the division is going to go. Khabib Nurmagomedov. Wow, it's actually happening. I hope no one gets injured, and I I'm ho- hope hope everybody makes weight. And I hope Khabib has been staying away from that tiramisu mm. and not eating it. He looks good. Like he looks like he's. I not was I sent it to you the other day that um, I seen a thing from Josh Thompson, and he's recording and walking home from training. Khabib look, looks trim. He looks like he's taken it very serious. Yeah. Well, wouldn't you? And Tony, well, he Tony Ferguson, did you see that one kicking a pipe? No. So, Tony Ferguson's trained up in Big Bear, where Triple G's training as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and he has his own little cabin and all that. And he has, it looks like he has a structure built for bags and stuff. But he has a, a pole or a, like a fucking pipe wrapped in black kind of felt or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to make it. He's kicking a pole. But if you look, it's, it's wrapped. Do you know what I mean? He's trying to make like his elbow on the wa- the wood and all this type of stuff. Like he's a good fighter. He's he, deadly now. Is, he, is he pulling some Tong Po tricks though? Yeah, Tong Po. Kicking, kicking the concrete wall. Kicking the concrete wall. But also on that card. Holy shit. The rematch of Tug Rose. Tug Rose. I Tug think, Rose. I think Rose is going to be the Joanna killer. Do you think she's going to do it again? Yeah, I do. I genuinely don't know. I do not know. I think that Joanna blamed a lot of the issues on her way and the lightning strike twice is the question. Um, In the same spot, the same way, can Rose do it again? Can she kill a Joanna Yen Jedrick? Or just let's just say Joanna champion. Let's, let's just say. Yeah, it. it's too hard. Or hold on. Or you can do young it. Young right, You can do it where the Americans say Young Jacek. Yeah. Goldberg yeah. used to say Young Young Jacek. I was like, where did the <laughs> Young come from? But that card, Rose Joanna. Renato Moicano against Calvin Qatar, Michael Chiesa against Anthony Pettis, and we Anthony Pettis, uh, Pettis, bleh, 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 bleh. Anthony Pettis has said recently he doesn't want to, doesn't be, a want to be a gatekeeper. That's going to be a big tell. Where it's, it's going to be another answer to the question. And then a fight I am looking forward to because there's been a whole load of beef between these two, Al Quinta and Paul Felder. Paul Felder, and that goes back a long way. I like these Paul two. Felder as well. I really like both of them, but I like Al uh, Quinta as well. Jesus, this is a card of bad second names. <laughs> it really is. Like, I pity whoever is the Bruce Buffer. I think it's no. Oh well, the announcer. But I think they said for the Khabib card. I it's also be Joe and Jimmy Smith. I was just about to say. Yep. Uh, the first time that Joe Rogan and Fake Joe Rogan are going to be together. <laughs> I really thought it was Joe Rogan when I seen him at Bellator. Yeah, you would be one of those people, wouldn't you? No, I met Joe Rogan, <laughs> but he does look a lot like him. Also on that card, Artem Lovov is fighting Alex Caceres, the goat. Artem is four and two in the UFC now. Yeah, four and two and yeah, like that's. I don't know. Like I, I feel like he has to. His record altogether is thirteen four, one yeah, draw, one no everybody. contest. He's fought no, oh, thirteen, thirteen wins, fourteen losses, one draw, one no contest. Yeah. Now he's fighting Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres, who his record is thirteen eleven and one, mm. and eight nine and one in the UFC. Yeah. So both of their records are not the greatest, but they've also both fought. They fought a lot a of people. Lot. Yeah. yeah. Which I respect. And in terms of Artem under Irish MMA scene, one of the nicest guys you can you can yeah. meet, talk, train with. He really is just a genuinely yeah. nice person. I've only met him a couple of times and any time I've met him he seems like a nice guy. No, he, and you know what, he, he worked and fought the hard way to get to where he is. Do which you remember is, didn't he get pulled for a fight a couple of years ago over to Poland and he was like fuck it yeah let's go something like I think, that I think he went as a corner and then ended up jumping in he, just him in mm. he also had a fight the opposite way well. he, he fought Jay Fornes yeah. on Cage Warriors a couple of years ago I think Jay stepped in last minute and ended up winning the decision against Artem if I'm not correct but he's literally fought and worked the hardest to get to where he is now I just worry with a 4-2 and two record in UFC if he loses or drops this fight what's going to happen um, obviously his toys with Connor will probably help his cause to yeah. a certain degree if he loses 
Where does he go? I think he goes to Bellator. To be honest with you, he, ha- he has a good name. If he, if he does or get the, cut, the he Russian goes to toys Bellator. with Fight Nights Global ACB and ACB, or something. he definitely could walk anywhere. Yeah, well, he could walk into any organization. I think they'll have him just because of his toys. Yeah, but I do think he can beat uh, Alex Caceres. I do as well. Yeah, I, I think I think um, Bruce Lee. Right, I was going to call him Bruce Lee because Caceres doesn't. I don't like it. <laughs> it's hard to say as well. Yeah, as I said, the, it's the it's the card the, the of card, card sword names. names like. Uh, and they're making my off. Let's just call him Calabib. <laughs> Cal- Calabib. Calabib. Joey Diaz. Calabib. <laughs> Steopich. Steopich. But anyway, so um, with Artem, I think I think that that fight, I think it's kind of made for him to beat him because Bruce Leroy is one of those jumping around the ring and jumping around the octagon, whatever. He tries to pop him with shots. If Artem's smart, just waits for him. Pops him, pops him, pops him and stops him big hook what? a big hook or something yep. just a, just and, I then, think and then you see Connor jump over the cage he's one he's one of those guys that you, you can time he's he, he kind of he tries to like he genuinely tries to act like Bruce Lee sometimes and tries to act like do you know what he reminds me of I want to get this middle film right because if I get it wrong you'll kill me because Kevin's an absolute diehard John claude Van Damme fan come on Shane I believe it's in kickboxer you. go ahead no, it's not kickboxer. No, it's not kickboxer. It's I know blood what you're sport. To tell me. The guy who jumps around the monkey stall kung fu. Yeah, kung fu. Yeah, it's a blood sport. Blood sp- it's blood sport chain. I got it right. It's I got blood it right. I corrected myself. I got yeah, it right. Good man. Thank God. What it was, you'd have done a split here, tore your groin while you were kicking me in the face again. I still kick you in the face though. It's grand. Yeah, but then I choke you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll bite you in the balls. Should we get down to the big one? Yeah, let's get down. Khabib, Tony Ferguson. El Kakui. Khabib. No, I think, stop I, doing that. I think I. <laughs> but anyway, holy shit, what a fight. What a fight. And if it happens, like I'm, I'm just looking, Khabib, 25 and 0. Yeah. Ferguson, 23 and 3. Has a submission loss and two decision losses. Mm. Khabib has won eight by knockout or TKO. He has eight submissions, nine decisions. And they have three mutual former opponents. Yeah, Michael Johnson and, and Ferguson, and that's that's the one. RDA, that RDA as well. So I don't know what way it's going to go down. For example, everybody knows Khabib is a heavy, heavy wrestler. Yeah, yeah. You could, you but Ferguson could is call a that, you could call it a heavy wrestler. He Fer- wrestles bears. Ferguson is a ten planet jujitsu black belt, and he's a he's a good black belt. And he's won nine of his fights for submission. Mm. So he has. Like, even his last fight there against Kevin Lee pulls a, a triangle choke out. And yeah. Kevin Lee is a good wrestler. Yeah, but... Obviously if, not Khabib. With, with that fight as well with Kevin Lee, Kevin Lee was a bit sick. So, we, we're we seeing Ferguson fight these guys, but you just don't know. And it's it's the same with Khabib. Like, the, Khabib has beaten Michael Johnson. Just to give people... Beat the fuck out of Michael Johnson. If, if there's people out there who don't know, because there's a lot of um, Conor McGregor fans... And I'm, I'm not disrespecting anybody by saying that, who don't necessarily understand how good other people are. Yeah. And then they hear the name like Khabib and they're like, ah, you'll kill him. Yeah. This is a dangerous fight for anybody. Anybody. And just to give you an idea of his credentials, he is the 2009 and 2010 Sambo World Champion. Yeah. In 2009, he won at 74 kilos. In 2010, he won at 82 kilos. But that was because all the tiramisu. But <laughs> he's, he's used to throwing heavier guys around. Yep. He really is. So throwing, you know, a one fifty five around, obviously probably rehydrated up to I don't know whatever, whatever. But he's still able to throw those heavier weights around. Yeah, and I, I think I think what you're trying to say, like it's it's the whole thing, like with the Johnson fight, like he literally was able to control him and talk to Dana away. Give me the fucking fight. He was telling him to give up. I need title shot. You know this. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So like maybe we haven't seen like. In that fight, Johnson cracked him a good few times. Mm. Like he caught him, and that's where you see. Like I think I wouldn't say it was a good few times. Once, yeah, I know. But he made him do the chicken dance. Exactly. Now he stumbled him, like he did. It was like, whoa, shit! Tony Ferguson brings that awkward style where he's just bouncing around. But it's 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 break dancing, kick. Yeah, weird things like spinning back elbows into Mm. other moves into like any like chains them into like takedowns. And then when he's on the ground, he's just as unpredictable because he has that 10 planet jiu-jitsu where he's like trying to like <laughs> Oma Platis, Go-Go Platis, yeah. like just... Mission control and all this yeah. type of stuff. I'm, I don't know the DBI stuff. Funny enough, no, when, when I first started jiu-jitsu, um, I got a, a DVD, which was a 10 planet jiu-jitsu DVD. Really? So yeah, I, I started watching uh, 10 planet jiu-jitsu and I thought that was... 
Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, I actually taught. Renato yeah. Laranja. And I, I started rolling with... Did you see uh, Renato Laranja beat Eddie Bravo? <laughs> Look, you've taken me off course with some silliness. Go on, go on. No, but I genuinely taught jujitsu. I thought ten plan of jujitsu was the way everybody did jujitsu. Okay. And yeah, then yeah. uh started training with people who didn't do ten plan of jujitsu and I was so you were pulling rubber guard on people who are doing straight kind of oh, I was, position and stuff. I think Chris Fields used to call me Inspector Gadget Go Go Gadget Legs. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. because my legs used I to just go everywhere. A few times. They go everywhere. It's ridiculous. Like I used to be like it was really bad, but I used to twist our people not knowing how well, bad that was because it's obviously a spine attack it's dangerous like. yeah well I know now like, but yeah. that was he developed that from wrestling essentially didn't he yeah Eddie was saying I think I watched a documentary on him he developed that from wrestling it's a, it's a from wrestling Ferguson has that black belt hmm. Khabib heavy wrestler obviously wants to take the fight to the mat yeah. nobody nobody has come close to even competing with Khabib on the mat no nothing has come close his wrestling yeah. is that good the, the kid used to wrestle beers but did you listen to John Danaher talk about his team and him come over to Hands of Gracie on the Joe Rogan podcast? I refresh my mind. He said that basically the team went, I think it was Khabib's team after um, Khabib's last fight, I think it was, that he come over to Hands of Gracie's academy. And I don't think Khabib was rolling on the mats, but his other guys, like John Danaher's guys, were, were giving it to them. They were strong wrestlers, blah, blah, blah. But the, the, the death squad were kind of not holding it on, they were. They're a, a, a level above. So, dominating? I don't know if he's kind of intim- in, insinuating dominate. It was more like, yeah, my guys know how to control these guys. More but like he be also, also said and alluded to the fact that he had some guys on his team who were better than the guys who compete. And just they just don't want to compete. Gym beasts. Yeah, yeah. As, as, and everybody knows about them. But come fight time, when the lights are on, and Khabib has made weight and he's in there, no one has competed I won't believe that fight is on until he makes weight. I won't even believe it's on until he's in the cage room. Yeah. Right. Anything can happen in that 24 hours after. Yeah, after. True. But I just... I really don't know. It's such an up-in-the-air fight. Mm. I, I, think, I think what's going to happen um, in, a couple of, in a couple of aspects is that Khabib could use his wrestling and just bleed and overpower uh, fucking Tony Ferguson. But then if he does try and overpower him, like I just, you, you see a lot of like bigger lads in jiu-jitsu, they do try and overpower the little guys. I'm not mm. saying they're bigger or whatever, but uh, wrestling-wise, you could use the wrestling, get in there, blah, 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 and then Ferguson pulls off a slick submission. That That's potential to happen. That's, because that's, he has that's such what I can see odd, happen. Because you, you were saying the word chaining of Ferguson. I might be wrong, but I have this in my head that he's done a spin and elbow and rolled into a leg a, a leg submission at one point. He, he does really strange Yeah, things. he does strange submissions. So Khabib can train. It's it's like when people are trying to train for Connor. It's very hard because you can't get people that think. So Khabib can train it with all these guys, but you don't know if you can actually mimic or reproduce it. Now, obviously, Connor being the former champion because this fight is going to be for the actual 155 and belt and said as soon as the first punch is thrown it's for the belt now from Connor's point of view I want Tony Ferguson win that fight because essentially Khabib will just hug him it's a bad fight for Connor against Khabib now obviously yeah. he can catch him no catch him coming in easily with those long arms Connor can ca- can hit anybody and yeah. catch anybody and, and absolutely send them into the next dimension yeah um, with that left hand but in terms of exciting fights, the fight against Khabib for Connor terrifies me. The fight against Tony Ferguson, I'm like, oh, no, no, this is a great fight. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because what's going to happen there is uh, Tony's going to throw shots. Yeah. Tony, Tony has will a weird... risk engagement on will the risk the engagement because then, like, if, if anything weird, like, um, Tony has a nice chin. He, he can't take a shot. Mm-hmm. He can't take a shot. But we don't know if he can take Ta- Connor's left. Like everybody can say whatever they want to say about McGregor. Well, the thing he the has belt, that he's, serious. He's never been well. he's never been stopped with strikes, either no. KO or TKO. You know what I mean? So it look the way I see my honest opinion and breakdown of Khabib against Tony is, I see them come out. I see Tony try some shit, spin maybe, miss something, straight down to the mat. Yeah. I see Khabib getting on top. I see Tony trying to be fancy and doing some silly things, probably popping up. Maybe popping back up, yeah. but going straight back down because Khabib will just train, cha- chain back out the takedown, take him down, and I see Khabib winning by decision. And that sets up the biggest fight in lightweight history. I think if Khabib's going to win, he wants to make a, a statement. 
obviously after the way cutting issues and this that the other I think he's going to try and make a statement with Ferguson especially the way Ferguson well as I said he, Ferguson does have that one submission loss but other than that his only other two losses have been by decision so he hasn't been stopped by strikes if Khabib does yeah. that that's a statement like, like, if he submits him it's also a statement but I just don't see I see a decision yeah but it's it's also like the way they used to say with George Foreman like how he like his power was just out of this world you don't know until you get in there with Khabib how strong he is on the ground mm. like Johnson's a big 155 and he literally just like whatever the, he caught him with that shot he held him down and it was like a man fighting a child and that's so, what he does to everybody as so we Khabib don't know pace, you know? like like Ferguson isn't like he's a big man whatever but he's not a, like a fucking dominating man he's a slick submission artist and he's good hands but Khabib just, could just hold him down pound him out when when Tony did fight Michael Johnson obviously yeah. Khabib destroyed Michael Johnson Tony lost to Michael Johnson um, Tony broke his arm in that fight in second round second round broke his arm and still went the distance That's so hard, it, show, like, it shows you the yeah. crazy character and toughness of Tony Ferguson it's gonna be it's gonna be a great fight there's and a the whole third man in the octagon could make that decision where Tony taking too many shots. So we don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. I think hopefully you, we get John I, I, for the, for Actually, the, John's not ref anymore. Is he the, not? the points that because he went to Bellator and yeah. is working as an analyst. Yeah. The, the points that I made. I think any ref going into the fight sees that Tony hasn't been stopped due to strikes. We'll yeah. give him that allowance. Look, he's gonna get smacked a little bit possibly, but he's never been stopped by strikes, so we're not gonna stop the fight too soon. Yeah, I hope so. But I see Khabib winning that fight, setting up fight with Connor in Russia. Yeah, even after this conversation, I'm kind of going with Khabib as for, well. For the undisputed belt. I just... It's hard to go against a guy who has dominated everyone. Yeah, but only his last maybe 10 fights or whatever was anybody. Yeah, well, still. It's hard to see yeah. anybody with the, an edge on him. Yeah, and then even saying that you look at the lads coming out of that side of the world. They're all beasts. So... Yeah, they're We just don't know their names, but... Saying that, though, see UFC London what Paul Craig did? Exactly. That is the wild card yep. in Tony Ferguson. Never, never, like, like May would have dealt with bloody uh, Ortiz. The, f the fight isn't over until it's over. And when exactly. You, when you have a sub 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 submission? Submission. Submission. I think submission. we should, I think we should uh, copyright that. Yeah. Submission. Submission. Uh, when you have a submission. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're sticking submission on specialist. Okay. We've who can there. pull out something out of the bag. The fight is never over. Yeah, and as Paul exactly. Craig showed in UFC London, last second, he won via. Uh, triangle, triangle choke in the third round. Yeah, Chael Sonnen experienced it against Anderson oh, Silva. I was so it, enjoying that fight until he got that got triangled. It can happen. It can happen. I, sure. I don't see it happening. I think uh, Khabib's positional awareness, his posture, the heaviness of his top control mm. won't allow him to slip into any stupid submission and attempts. And as well, like he's 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 in there training. He's tra training with like. DC, he is training with DC. Like they do train, like they, they work together. So wrestling is going to be on point. Everything's going to be on point. Like it's his wrestling is already going to be on I point. I know, but like DC is another level as well. Like he's a, an Olympian. He knows his wrestling. So uh, having a mind like that in your camp, even like, giving you a few. And pointers, I'm sure he's going to bring in someone who knows ten planet jiu yeah. Just just to throw up the submission attempts yeah. or work. I don't know about ten planet jiu -jitsu. It might be one who's of the death squad. Who's going to work squad. rubber guard or mission control? Yeah, it might be one of and, the death and, and throw up all these different things, you know, and yeah. and and get that level of attention to jiu-jitsu in his camp yeah. um because other than that the awkwardness of the st of the striking the awkwardness of the jiu-jitsu my stifled khabib yeah but I, I, I see i see khabib winning being honest with you i okay. see him winning and i see him i see him winning by decision i give you that um we'll see how my prediction goes yeah because that'll be on the record shan uh, it's on tape i can't lie about it exactly but that's basically covering this week's episode yeah that's everything like um there's nothing really else we kind of need the cover coming up like no, we what? probably have verbal diarrhea we have yeah, we have exactly. a good guest coming on next week uh matt bork from magic minds podcast yeah matt works with uh people have had brain injuries and rehabbing them and stuff like that so he's going to be excellent to help us yeah well definitely need to help you <laughs> but um it's going to be good to talk to matt about just the brain and what can happen to your impact and damage over a long time and i want to know whether like supplements like alpha brain work so I'm I'm really intrigued just to ask that type of like, questions. If they work, I'm gonna spend a fucking fifty euro it is for a tub of the stuff like. <laughs> like it's ridiculous price. Well, like. um, this is obviously just the first episode back. Want to give a shout out to Charles and Jim Trishan. Yeah. Um, Charles is a food prep and healthy healthy eatery. 
but he's located just off Cork Street. Um, but he also delivers uh, the meals prepped yeah. to your home if you want that. But if not, if you're on Cork Street area, pop in. Tell him Scrap Chat sends you. And if you're a fighter, MMA, boxing, bodybuilder, he can cater to you as well. As, as you can see, he's, he's sponsoring Spike. And what a huge platform for him to yeah, exactly. be sponsoring Spike. And it goes to show you that we're high-level athletes working with him like that. Yep. You know what I mean? And we're not just saying that because Charles sponsors. We're saying it because it speaks for itself. And his field is nice and it's healthy. Yeah, and he's in shape. He's... He's in ridiculous shape yeah. for a man of I, his I, age. I, I, I actually was like, Shane, what are you doing? Yeah, a man of his age is is in shape and better shape than me. Okay, it's getting a little bit gay now, Shane. I know. <laughs> Says the the guy with the hand gestures at the start. What hand? I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, that's been this week's episode. As it says, the first one back. Hopefully, new and improved. Um, new sounding, new setting. Yeah. Um, guests lined up. We have fighters, promoters. We have some and really, really a good of guests. Competitions coming up as well do we have some really good competitions we have, we're giving away some memorabilia from both boxing and uh, mma mm-hmm. legends yeah legends but you're not having fader okay um, isn't that right fader yeah yeah well anyway this has been scrap chat episode four or one yeah from myself shane kirkwood and kevin doyle we oui. yeah thank you very much for tuning in and uh don't forget to drop us some dms leave some comments let us know your uh your feedback and uh subscribe subscribe thank you thank you see you again